You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri and today we're going to be talking about expectations. Those that they have on us, right? So many people have expectations on who we can be and what we should be doing. But then also the expectations that we have for ourselves and how we can be released from that and just be arms wide open to what's possible. So we're going to be talking about that. Also, we'll be taking your calls. Again, that number is 800-333-0001, 800-333-0001. If you'd like more resources on today's topic, please reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. We want to make sure that you are supported. And also, if you have an inspirational story that you'd like to share with our community, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, just, again, send your story to connect at livingfullout.com. In our next segment, our inspirational guest will be coming up, Colleen Warner. She's going to talk about how she dealt with an eating disorder as a dancer and how she was really able to love her body as she grew into a mature woman. And, and how did she do that? How can we all look at our bodies and appreciate the good parts and also know what we need to work on and, and steadily do that? So again, we'll be looking out for her story. And if you want to hear today's show again, please feel free to go to livingfullout.com, go to the radio show tab, and all of our episodes will be waiting there for you. Or if you have Alexa, we are on Alexa as well, and you can just ask her to play any one of our shows. Just go to Living Full Out Radio Show. And we're in the i the app stores for iPhone and Android. So again, whether you need to get motivated at, in the evenings or in the morning or on the road, just feel free to connect with livingfullout.com and we'll be there to support you. Now I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller in the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hello, how huh? are you? Thank you, thank you, I'm doing good. How can we help you today? Uh, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, my question was, what are some ways, like some of the best ways to go about time management? Like how do I organize myself when like school gets busy? Ah, great question. And I remember those days, I've been out of school for a while, but it does get really hectic, right? Between school, studying, uh, sometimes a, a job in addition to a social life. So let me ask you a question. What is the biggest demand that you have right now? Uh, probably just maintaining like good grades with schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Now, do you feel like you're good at keeping a schedule or do you oftentimes just kind of uh, fly by the seat of your pants type of thing? I've tried, I've tried to get a little better using like applications, but um, it's still, there's still times where like different things come up and it's hard to like manage and prioritize. Okay. And the first step there is just acknowledging that. And so what I want you to consider are a couple things. Apps and schedules, they're all good. You just got to find the method that's best for you. So for example, some people do have a weekly, monthly planner. And they put everything in there, sometimes to the hour or even to the minute. And that works for them. For other people, the night before they go to bed, they, they put together a to-do list for the next day. And you might even put you know, time parameters around when things need to be done. If those methods are working great, if they're not working, you might need to up the ante and enroll other people to support you. Now, the other people can't tell you necessarily down to the minute that what you should be doing, but you can absolutely have accountability partners for school, maybe um, somebody who's also in your same class that can check in with you throughout the week to make sure that you're on track. Or maybe if you're looking to work out, it's an accountability partner, someone that you can work out with or can check in with you a couple times a week and make sure that you're on track. Do you have those people in your life that are keeping you accountable? Uh, I can definitely find some for sure. Okay. So I would uh, encourage you to do that. And, and most of all, be good to yourself, right? Because you can, you can look at yourself as though you're a robot. Do, do, do. Go, go, go. You know, stick to that schedule. But at the same time, life is organic. And it's really meant to be lived. 
So there may be an opportunity that pops up in your day that wasn't in your planner, but it's something that, gosh, you'd really enjoy doing, or maybe it's an opportunity to connect with new people. And so don't get yourself overcommitted. That's the only thing about a schedule. Leave a little wiggle room in there so that when new opportunities pop up, you can say yes. Will you do that for me? Yep, we'll do. Thank you. You got it. Have a great day. Thank you for calling in. No problem. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Love that he asked that question because, again, I, I can feel the expectations that he has for himself, all the things that he wants to do and do them on time in the right way, and I admire that. But at the same time, just like I told him, life is meant to be lived, so we need to be able to embrace those unexpected, beautiful moments. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have another caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can we help you today? Hi, uh, so I'm a college student and mm -hmm. I'm doing a team project right now, mm -hmm. but my team is are not like contribute that much as I do. So I don't know like how I can communicate with them, like to let them contribute more. Mm. And that's a bit scary, right? Because when it's a group project, if one goes down, you all go down, right? Yeah. Or you have to, or and you're going to. It's gonna... like a 50% of my break. Right. And you don't want to do all the work and have everybody else coast through either. Mm -hmm. So how many people are in this group? Three. Three. Okay. And are you the leader of the group or is there already an established leader in the group? I'm the leader. You're the leader. So if, okay. If someone else is a leader, then I don't have to worry about this. Okay, but I got it. But you are the leader. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe you've already done this, maybe not. I'm going to tell you a couple, a couple suggestions I have. Number one is, yes, you could take the assignment and break it up so everybody has an equal section. And that mm -hmm. sounds good in the parameters of everybody having equal talents and gifts. But the thing is, is there may be certain um, talents that you have that another team member doesn't have as strong. Like some of you might be better writers. Others might be better mm -hmm. researchers. Okay. And so you can, mm -hmm. kind of have to look at the project and see where the strengths are from the team and see if you might be able to shuffle things around. Some of these folks might not be doing what they're doing on time because they feel as though they can't live up to the expectations of you or the group. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times mm -hmm. we, we do get in our own way. We self-sabotage ourselves. We know that we have a project. We know we have a deadline, but yet we say yes to going to the movies or we watch TV for too long, right? So what I would do if I were you and I were the leader is I would look at where the project is currently, what still needs to be done, and you might wanna mm -hmm. reshuffle things around. Look at your teammates, or even maybe have a conference call together by phone or an in-person meeting, and see if things should be shuffled around into a different order so that people are really mm -hmm. doing their best based upon what they're good at. The other thing is, as a leader, don't be afraid to put some motivational messages out there telling your teammates, I believe in you, I'm here for you, or even reminders when things are due. Hey, I know you're going to come up with some great research. Just remember it's due today at five, right? So mm -hmm. qualities of a good leader is that you keep your teammates motivated, you keep them accountable, but reshuffle task if they need to be so that everybody is really doing what they're good at, that you're tapping into each person's strengths. And then when you look at the big picture of it all, well, you may sit there going, oh gosh, I wish I wasn't the leader, right? The universe gave you this leadership role for a reason. And it is so that you can get the growth from it. It's hard. It's really hard to be the leader, right? Because sometimes you have to keep people accountable and keep them inspired. But it's also an opportunity for you to grow and learn. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. So as I round us call out with you, I just want to say one last thing, okay? It's kind of like what mm -hmm. I told the last caller. I also want you to be good to yourself. You have a lot of expectations, I can tell, on your shoulders. You want the good grade. I know that. I can see that. I can hear that. 
But at the same yeah. time, you're a doer and you're somebody who dots your I's and you cross your T's and you get things done. So it is scary to know that things might not turn out the way that you hope. You just got to release mm -hmm. some of those expectations and just do your best. That's all you can do. Okay. Okay. But thank you so much for calling in and we'll be thinking of you and wishing you all good things. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. And so coming up in our next segment, we're going to have Colleen Warner again, talking about having an eating disorder and how did she learn to love her body and not look at the flaws? Stay with us. You don't want to miss that. It's all about releasing those expectations that we have for ourselves that others have on us. Yuck. Let's get rid of those heavy burdens on our shoulders and let's live our lives full out. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about expectations and just how much of a pressure that can be on our shoulders and sometimes keeping us up at night but I want you to feel free from that. How do we embrace who we are and who we can be without those expectations pulling us down? Now, I wanna welcome our inspirational guest today, Colleen Warner to the show. She went through her own expectations that she had on herself, going through an eating disorder as a dancer, trying to look and feel her best, yet knowing you know, how people see dancers and the way they should look and act and be. So I'd very much like to welcome Colleen to the show. Hi, Nancy. Thank Hi. you so much for having me. You're very welcome, and I'm excited to have you. And and although the topic is one that can be heavy, it's also one that I feel mm -hmm. is hopeful, right? Because if we can acknowledge oh, an expectation, if we can release what we think people feel we should be or look or act, then we can really just step into being our authentic selves. So that that is the goal of Living Full Out. So you're a perfect guest to have on for this topic. And I want to take our audience back a little bit. Obviously, we know that you had a career as a professional dancer, but at what age did your uh, eating disorder really start? Because a lot of times it starts when we're even younger, just how people act in our family mm -hmm. or our friends. At what age did you start to become aware of your body and what you liked or didn't like? Sure. Um, I mean, I think definitely the earliest time that I can remember really feeling concerned about my body or feeling like, you know, that there was something wrong with my body was when I was eight years old and I went through my yearly physical at my doctor. And um, after I got off the scale and he had weighed me, he said to me and my mom that I needed to eat more salads, which for me as a little eight year old who ate a pretty like varied diet, I was, you know, ate very normally at home and I wasn't really a picky eater. I ate a lot of different things. And I also, I just didn't like salad. I liked vegetables. But I was like, what does he mean that I have to eat more salads? And it just kind of, this comment has always stuck in my brain and was kind of like the first time that I thought of something that was like different as far as my body or food or that I needed to focus on it. Because in the past, it was kind of just like my body was my body, food was food. It wasn't something that I really place a lot of focus on. You know what, Colleen, I so get that because I remember a family friend one time when I was younger saying, oh my gosh, you look like Santa Claus. And it wasn't because I was wearing red and white. Yeah. It was because he yeah. was basically saying I was chunky and I was like, what? Yes, I get that. It's amazing how the words that an adult can say to a child can really kind of frame up how we're going to walk into our life and so at eight Definitely. years old when you were told this by the, your doctor did your mom agree with the doctor and did that kind of further cement how you saw yourself um to an extent i mean even especially now we've been talking about it a lot um you know as we've been reflecting on different things with my recovery and thinking back on things as a child and she said to me recently she was saying that you know before that, she hadn't really had any major concerns, but hearing the doctor say that about her child made her think, oh my gosh, you know, there's going to be some major health concern or there's something wrong with my child. And then she believed that it was something that I needed to change then, you know, because obviously, you know, you think of these health professionals as authorities that you can and should trust, 
So even though herself as a nurse, you know, my mom has a lot of medical knowledge, but at the same time, she, you know, she really took it to heart too, which is difficult. And, you know, it's um, clearly shaped me a lot and amazing to think, you know, that, well, maybe not so amazing, but crazy to think that all these statements, you know, little, little things like that can make such a lasting impact. Even like you said, with that Santa comment and like the fact that, you know, how many years later you remember, you know, that comment and it really shapes how you view yourself and the expectations you place on yourself and everything like that. Absolutely. And when we think of an eight-year-old, I mean, an eight-year-old is a really small little bean. <laughs> okay, they're, they're cute yeah. little kids, but eight is, they're so small on the road of life. And so... At eight exactly. years old, did you just kind of keep this internally into yourself? Did you really not make any changes or did you start aggressively making changes at eight? Um, at eight specifically, I didn't really make any changes, but then I would say the first time I dieted was when I was 10 years old and I always was a very independent child and I also started reading at a very young age and was very aware of different things. And I had found a Weight Watchers book in my living room. And I didn't really, like, ask anyone if I should read it or if I should look at it. It was just, like, I was home or whatever, and I found it. And I was, like, I had heard about different diets and things. I was, like, oh, I'll look at this. All of a sudden, I decided after hearing, you know, so many, quote, unquote, good things about um, diets and, you know, things like that and good things about weight loss that it pulled me in. And I was, like, oh, well, this is something that I should be doing. If other people, you know, because this is what I'm seeing in magazines and this is what I'm hearing on TV and everybody sounds, sounds like it's such a great thing when people do these things and, I decided to take it upon myself to look at the Weight Watchers book and, you know, I started logging all of my food and these things that were definitely, um, you know, very much starts of um, disordered eating behaviors that eventually, you know, formed into a full-blown eating disorder. And I think it's because I was so independent at a young age that it wasn't like people were really like concerned as far as different things I was doing. They kind of like didn't have, not that my, like my parents are amazing parents and, you know, they did an amazing job raising me, but because I was so independent, it wasn't like they felt like they needed a helicopter over me or, you know, they let me be very independent, especially because I'm a baby of my family. So, and I was always very mature, but at the same time, since they didn't have that watchful eye, these types of things, like if someone was watching more carefully, probably would have been like, hmm, you're 10 years old. You probably shouldn't be doing this. Right. But it kind of, you know, it kind of like went unnoticed. Now, as you went along and you started to diet and log what you were eating and, and, and so forth, mm -hmm. and I know that you were an athletic kid, obviously, so yeah, did you at some point know, maybe this is a little bit too much, maybe a little too extreme? Um, I mean, it took a very long time for me to think that anything was too extreme, and actually, the first time, and it wasn't until I think I was like... 17 or 18 that I really thought that there was anything possibly wrong and it was only really an inkling it was I had gone to a doctor because I was having some autoimmune issues and he put me on an elimination diet which helped me find out that um I have celiac and I can't tolerate gluten but in that time frame because I had to eliminate um, a bunch of different types of foods and my diet was fairly limited because of us trying to figure out you know what I was not able, able to tolerate I lost some weight and that was the first time I guess since it was like kind of out of my control that it wasn't weight loss that I was trying to cause mm. that I thought it was maybe a problem and I said it to my mom and she was like you know what like maybe we'll mention it to the doctor when we go there again and see what he says and he kind of brushed it off and was like oh it'll even out like there's no problem and looking back on it now it definitely um was a problem and I think one of the big problems is you know that health some medical professionals aren't educated very well with eating disorders and things to look for especially yeah. if it's not you know and you were and you were now starting yeah and you were now starting to essentially ask for help and that kind of opened a new door yeah. i want you to stay with us colleen because we're going to be going to a break here mm -hmm. um but but i think we're going into a, a part of your story which is really important when the person with the eating disorder starts to recognize that they need help and starting to ask for help but yet nobody's listening so how do we listen yeah. to those folks? So stay with us and everybody, when we come back today, we're mm -hmm. talking about the expectations that we have for ourselves or others place on us and how we can be released from that and really allow yourself to step into the good parts of who you are and who you wanna be. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this break. This is the Living Full Out Show, I'm Nancy Soleri. Stay with us.
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back to the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri, and today we're talking about expectations and how do we put those in check? How do we really read between the lines and see what is valid, but what do we need to let go of so it doesn't, you know, become weights on our shoulders or, you know, determine the path we should take. So our inspirational guest today, Colleen Warner, she did walk that same road, you know, as she was battling an eating disorder and also having a dancing career. She had many people having expectations on her for who she should be and, and what she should do. So I'd very much like to welcome Colleen back to the show. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. So, you know, in, in the last segment, you talked a lot about how your eating disorder began. And mm -hmm. what I want to focus on now is kind of when it became its most epic, when you really knew mm -hmm. it had got more aggressive. At what point was that? Sure. Um, well, one of the first times that I kind of really realized that I wanted to change aside from, you know, I mentioned before the time where I kind of brought it up to my doctor as far as the weight loss. I hadn't really mentioned an eating disorder, but I had thought that there was the issue, you know, with losing weight. But then it was about a year later. It was the summer of my sophomore year of college. And one of my best friends um, who I've known since sixth grade, and she had been in and out of treatment herself for an eating disorder while we were in high school. And um, I, for her birthday, all of us went into New York City, because I'm from New York, um, and we went to see a Broadway show, and we took a trapeze class, and we went out to dinner. And while we were, um, we took a limo, and while we were in the limo, I realized that a lot of the friends who, other than me, that she had invited were friends that she had met in treatment for her eating disorder. And they were talking about, you know, recovery and things like that. And I started to realize that these things they were talking about were, you know, that they were in treatment for were things that I was doing daily and multiple times a day. And it kind of, you know, opened my eyes. So I was like, wow, they're going to treatment for this. And this and is just something that's become part of my day to day life and realizing also because a few of the friends were very solid in their recoveries and I could tell that they were so happy and doing so well that I was, I kind of just never thought that was something that would be possible for me to feel that way. So it kind of opened my eyes and I was like, Hmm, maybe there is a problem. Maybe I do need to consider seeking help. And that was definitely one of the first moments that I really, really considered it that whole summer. I kind of went back and forth with myself and was like, Oh, it's not really a problem. Mm -hmm. Like if it was a problem, someone would have said something by now, but Eventually, well, I ended up just... Let me ask you a real quick question before you go on to the eventually, mm -hmm. because I think it's really important for our community to understand what were some of those things that you were doing? Not so much what the others sure. had overcome, and, and but there, was, there were similar stories. So what were things that you were doing, yeah. and were you at the point of being anorexic and bulimic, or what stage were you in? Um, for me, I was struggling with anorexia and also um, orthorexia, which orthorexia, for people who don't know, is a fixation on clean eating, which is being very specific about, you know, like quality of food and only eating like maybe organic things or only things that are stereotypically healthy. And, you know, um, that was a big part of it for me that my behaviors were very restrictive, that I was really restricting the amount of food I was eating and also the types of food that I was eating. Um that um, even like when I would go out to restaurants that I was very particular about the foods that I would eat, that I wasn't just enjoying myself out to dinner, that I was getting the very healthy options and I wasn't, you know, I never really ate ice cream and I wasn't letting myself just enjoy food. Food had become the enemy and I was doing things even like I was compulsively exercising a lot where I would go to the gym multiple times a day. Or I would, you know, exercise while I was waiting for my dinner to heat up when I would get home from um, any dance rehearsals and things like that. Things that were definitely, especially looking back now, not, you know, normal or healthy behaviors at all, which definitely is part of the tricky thing with eating disorders and with things, you know, even like orthorexia and 
because especially with orthorexia and how wellness culture is that there's a very fine line between, you know, living a balanced, healthy life and being obsessive. And that's the tricky thing is that these things have become so normalized. So it's really hard to see it. And that was for me too, because in the dance world, very, very thin bodies, like that stereotypical ballerina body is so desired. And um, so for me, when I was losing weight, I was getting so much praise for it because I was getting that ballerina body and no one really thought anything bad of it. People ever thought it was very good. So mm-hmm. it's difficult to realize that you have an issue when these behaviors are being praised. And when you're getting so much praise for what you're doing, why would you want to stop? Yeah, I get that. And that could be whether you're a dancer or not. And it, 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 is, it is a fine yeah. line because as we start to see people lose weight, we want to encourage them, but also let them know we just love them how they are, because if you encourage them too much, they yeah. can go the other direction. And so what was treatment like for you when you finally engaged and you were like, enough's enough, I, I need help? What was that treatment? Sure. Well, um, I first started going to therapy in September of 2016. And at that time, I still was partially in denial of my eating disorder. I knew that something was up with me mentally, but I was just basically claiming that it was like anxiety, even though it was definitely the majority of that anxiety was around food in my body. Mm-hmm. But then I, um, you know, I started therapy. I actually started a type of therapy that's called dialectical behavior therapy, which was started by um, a psychologist, um, Dr. Marsha Lenahan in the 1980s. And it was originally created for borderline personality disorder, but it's since been used for mainly you know, a lot of different mental health conditions and it's shown a lot of progress with eating disorders. And so the therapist I was going to was a DBT specialist. And it was pretty much after I relapsed that Thanksgiving. And it was after that that I really started being open about what was going on because I realized that clearly not being open about it and not addressing what was going on, I was pretending to myself that everything was getting better. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. So, um, well, and I, want, I, want, and I, I want to ask you a lot more in therapy. I want to ask mm-hmm. you real quick about that, Colleen, because whether it's sure. alcohol, whether it's gambling, whether it's a food addiction, the thing is, is relapses do happen, and and we we could all do yeah. that. We I mean, I, we could just say, hey, I want to work out more, and then all of a sudden secretly eat a cheeseburger, but nobody knows but me, right? Um, the thing is, mm-hmm. is a relapse has just happened. So, what 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 caused you to relapse? Was it was it stress? And then once you did, did you kind of throw your hands in the air and you're like, what's the point? Or did it further ignite that fire within you? Um, so for me, it was kind of a combination of stress. I mean, I, I that was during my sophomore year of college. So I was definitely, you know, in a high stress situation. And I was still dancing a lot. And also that... Um, it had kind of been like my first like quote unquote normal Thanksgiving since I was pretty much a kid as far as, you know, trying to allow myself to just enjoy different foods without being restrictive. And, you know, I had been allowing myself to live a more normal life in terms of food and exercise and things like that. But then um, I went shopping and my mom had gone Black Friday shopping and my um, jean size had gone up because we were getting jeans, you know, whatever store it was had a sale and we were like, oh, you know, we'll get these as a Christmas gift for me and my size had gone up and seeing that because at that point I had only been in therapy for a few months and I didn't really have you know a really well established like set of coping skills and at that point it was just so much for me that I couldn't deal with that change and it all just spiraled and it was a few months before I really I would say it was like maybe like Christmas-ish, maybe the beginning of January, like the beginning of the new year, when I really figured out that, like, I needed to get out of that spiral. Mm. And then I, again, I engaged much more deeply in therapy, and I ended up doing really well for a while until I would say um, this past January, February around there, when I had a lot of life stressors going on. Um, I had several family losses. I had lost my grandmother, who I was very close to. And then I was also taking 18 credits in school. I'm a college student. And then I had sprained my ankle. And this is all in the span of like three weeks right in the beginning of the semester. Mm -hmm. And then also in the midst of this relapse, I um, ended a long-term relationship. And so it was just so much at once that um, even though at that point I had so many well-established coping skills that my brain and body just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then... um, 
I definitely, I relapsed. I mean, I realized much quicker what was going on with that situation. I mean, I did make some excuses. I was like, oh, you know, people who experience loss do things like this. And while obviously that's valid, it's yeah. the time that I realized this isn't what I want to be doing. Well, and I want to ask you a question because our time is almost over. So I could just talk to you for hours, by the way, Colleen. Mm -hmm. You're great. But the thing is, is Thank you. for our audience who's listening today, if it's a, if they're, considering maybe gosh maybe I have an eating disorder or mm -hmm. if they consider maybe my friend does or my sister or my daughter does what do we need to know to get that person help because they might not ask sure um so I would say a big thing is realizing that eating disorders don't discriminate on um, people of all sizes shapes ages genders ethnicity social classes all sorts of backgrounds, um, sexual orientations have eating disorders. And it's very easy to think of these stereotypical eating disorders and the majority of people who have eating disorders don't fit into these stereotypes. So but, what think, do you, but what do you, you know, say to somebody? Them. But what do you say to somebody if you think they have an eating um, disorder? It's definitely tricky, but I think, you know, being really honest and just bringing up that you are concerned and maybe offering them resources. There are some great resources through... Um, I am a social media manager for an organization called Project Teal, and their website is theprojectteal.org, T-H-E-P-R-O-J-E-C-T-H-E-A-L.org. They have information, and also I'm currently interning with the National Eating Disorders Association. Mm -hmm. Their website is nationaleatingdisorders.org, and they have a wealth of information, and they also have a helpline where people can call and get information and guidance, so I would say definitely... Those two nonprofits are very close to my heart and were also crucial in me getting help. So I think being honest with the person and letting them know that you're there for them and letting them know that you like that it seems like they're struggling because them knowing that there is someone there for them is the biggest thing and being yeah. able to make that step for getting help. Sometimes we need that life preserver and just toss it out to them and hope yeah. they grab they grab on. And Colleen, just thank you so much for being on today's show and and it, like I said, it goes so fast with you, but um, all those resources yeah. were very helpful. And we're going to wish you all the best because I know it's an every day. It's still a little bit of a fight. You know, you never know which trigger might cause yeah. you to spiral. So we will continue to wish you healthy thoughts. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. Thank you. And when we come back, everybody, we're continuing to talk about the expectations that we need to release and just let go so that you can really step in to be the person you want to be laughing out loud, crying when you need to, but really allowing the emotions to move you along in life in a positive way. This is the Living Full Out Show. I'm Nancy Soleri. We'll be right back. When the expectations that other people have for you or ones that you have for yourself seem stressful and they're pressuring on your shoulders and they are dictating you to go a certain direction, I want you to pause and breathe and just ask yourself, are these expectations valid? Do they resonate with who I want to be? It's okay to say no. It's okay to put them in check because it's all about you living your life full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Solari, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And we've been talking about expectations of all different kinds and how it can really affect us, our, our, our mindset, our desires to move forward and do things that we really want to do, but maybe people feel we should go in another direction. And sometimes we really do have to put those expectations in place. You know, are they valid? Are they true? Are they resonating with who we want to be? And so I want you to think about at the end of the show, what expectation for yourself do you need to let go of today? You've been holding on to it. It hasn't served you. I want you to let it go. I also want you to question maybe some of the expectations that people have on you for your life and think about, gosh, I know they keep saying this, but I don't agree. And it's my life. Always remember, this is your life. Whether you do things right or wrong, it's still your journey. 
And that is the, that's the whole thing about life, right? That's how we gain the lessons when we fail, when we misstep, when we fall. So if you don't do that from time to time, you're not going to get that lesson. So put those expectations in check today. And we're going to go to the phone lines and check in with one of our callers. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Um, hi. hi. Hi, thank you for calling in. How can we help you? Um, hi. Um, so um, my problem is that um, so I want to see what I want to do. So this guy hit me up on Instagram. He wanted to get in contact with me. Mm -hmm. And he said he wants to get to know me better. And uh, we exchanged numbers. But um, now I'm, uh, I'm just wondering how I can get him to talk on a deeper level. Because mm. he just wishes me good morning in the morning, then we just say hi to each other. But that's really it. Yeah. And you'd like to get to know him more. Uh, yeah, and he expressed that he does too, but I guess he's being lazy or forgetful. Like, he mm. wanted to do a phone call, but I don't know, it hasn't happened yet. Well, I have, t I have a couple thoughts for you, okay? Some you're going to like and some okay. you might not. But I'm always going to be honest with okay. you, okay? Whether it is Instagram, whether it's online dating, at some point, which is what you're trying to do, you got to take it from online to the phone, maybe even in person, just to make sure that those, okay. that intuition, that potential chemistry is real. Because until you talk to them or until you see them, you just don't know. All the good mornings in the are great, but is the time you're spending going back and forth, I'm not saying not worth it, but is this somebody that could be more or not? And so you really want to find that out sooner than later. So I would continue to ask that person, hey, are you available tonight to talk on the phone? Or I'm sh maybe even just say to them, hey, I know your schedule is probably really busy this week. Um, you know, let's, let's set a time this weekend to talk or even meet in person, depending on where they are. Continue to put that out there. Now, here's the part you're not going to like. If they keep saying no, or they come up with excuses, or they're so busy, nobody is that busy that they can't pick up the phone and talk for five minutes at some point in a seven day, day, day period, right? At some point, you're going to have mm -hmm. to ask yourself, could this person be not authentic with me? Is there something going on? Because it might be that they're shy, but at the same time, on a very basic level of friendship, right? We all want friends in the world, right? I just met a, a gal the other day at a social function and you know we had a great conversation for about 10 minutes and then I had to go. We exchanged numbers and I think she'd be a great new friend. So you know what, I'm gonna call her this weekend and just say, hi, it was great meeting you. Even if I don't get her, I'll just leave her a voicemail, just friendly. But I'm taking it you know, and extending it to having another conversation. For you, it's the same thing. You have to extend it, but you got to get it to the phone or in person. If this other person does not engage, you might have to just tell yourself, gosh, this might just be a really nice person, but maybe they are committed in a relationship. Maybe they are shy, but it might just have to stay online and I'm not going to invest too, too much into it. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. You want to make sure that in the span of life, because there's no guarantees of tomorrow. I mean, we ho all hope we live to be 100, right? There's no guarantees. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is you want to spend the time and your energy on people that want to be with you, want to support you. So give that person every benefit of the doubt. Stay the course. Continue to ask to talk on the phone or meet in person. But at some point down the line, weeks from now, months from now, even a year from now, if that person doesn't engage, you might just have to be a little bit realistic with, you know, there might be something going on on their end where they can't really take it beyond online. Does that make sense? Right, right. Okay. And I say that in the most loving way because you seem awesome. And I would like to be your friend. So many people mm -hmm. in our community are hearing you right now going, he sounds great. I would call him. I'd meet mm -hmm. with him, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to make right. sure you find like-minded people that want to run with you through life and enjoy it. Okay? Right. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. And okay, thank you. Thank you, you so got much. it. Bye-bye. And as we round up today's show, just remember that expectations can be released. They can also be considered. But you are the one who makes the final call, the decisions in your life. 
I believe in you. So does the entire Living Full Out family. Just know we're here to support you each week. Go to livingfullout.com if you want to hear this show again or catch us on Alexa or the uh, app stores. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out. Thank you for watching the Living Full Out YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you're interested in the content we provide, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Now for more inspirational content, click the video on the right to get to know me, Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out show and certified life coach in more detail. Click the video on the left and you'll be motivated by the Living Full Out radio show and our inspirational guests and callers. Keep in mind, we welcome your comments. If you're empowered, let us know. Feel free to leave a comment. We would enjoy hearing from you. And here's to you living your life full out.